Hey, what's up everybody? This is the K-Man 1971 back again. It's about that time once again <laughs> for another comic book haul. So let's jump right on in. Um, here's Venom number five, super hot title right now, and it deserves all the hype that it's getting. I um, jumped on probably about sometime last month, and I love it. Uh, great writing, which is no, no surprise from Donnie Cates. Uh, beautiful artwork from Ryan Stegman. Venom has never been illustrated this well since Todd McFarlane, in my opinion. So yeah, definitely all in on this. And the only other title that happened to come out this week, Action Comics 1002, um, beautiful David Mack cover. And I have to say, this is the most that I've been enjoying uh, Brian Bendis' writing in a long time, probably at least half a decade. <laughs> oh, I'm so old. All right, so I ended up finding, a, well, not finding another comic shop, a comic shop that I hadn't been going to <clears throat> as a, for a while because they ended up moving to the mall. And uh, for a while, <clears throat> they, they were not ordering up to snuff. So this was like my fourth tier comic shop that I would go to uh, whenever um, my local comic book shops would sell out of current books. And this comic book shop, they're part of a chain, so they would order in, in bulk. So um, I went back there last week and trying to fill in my Venom run, and uh, they're back up to snuff again. So uh, I bought a nice stack of books, of current books, that I have that I missed out on on the first time. So here's Venom number two, the second print, and the book that got me to go over there to begin with, Venom number four, um, sold out in both of my comic book shops. So uh, I picked up that copy and uh, a second copy. So. Very cool. Love this book. I also had to jump on and snag a copy of Fantastic Four number one. Beautiful art germ cover. In my opinion, possibly the, the most beautiful Sue Storm cover ever. And I guess this will be setting a theme for this particular haul of uh, the woman of power. So, uh, yeah. Beautiful. And um, haven't got a chance to actually read it yet, but I am looking forward to it. Another comic that I missed out on the first time around, Old Man Logan, number 43. I guess it's an appearance of a new character. Wonder Woman, number 50. Yet another beautiful Jenny Frizen cover. Action Comics, 1001. I missed out on the David Mack cover at my uh, one of my local comic book shops, so... Very cool to pick that up. Make some room. Had to pick up this beautiful Mock Brooks cover. I mean, that is just awesome. I can't see how uh, people wouldn't like that. But to each their own. This was actually half price. This is like a $15 book. Uh, Batman number 35, celebrating 800 issues. Uh, I would like to get this whole set by Tony Daniel. Um, Superman number 23, um... I forget what the Flash issues and Wonder Woman issues are, but I, I still need the Flash and Superman issue to complete the, the set, the anniversary set. And shout out to Jim's Comics for pointing this book out. I ended up picking up a copy of Gideon Falls, number one, first print, tough black cover. Haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I pretty much uh, know that I'm going to like it. I really dig the, the creative team of uh, Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. All right. Now, on to the back issues. Spider-Woman number one. Um, just love this cover. I'd like to pick up uh, issue number two also. Some of the best Spider-Woman covers out there. And I, I flipped through it. I, I really do like the the creative team of Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Mayleaf. They did, aside from Frank Miller, my favorite run on Daredevil. So, I'd like to give this a whirl. Shout out to Strange Blade for showing this book off. Moon Knight number 20, which um, reprints Werewolf by Night number 32, which um, I've actually never read the first appearance of Moon Knight, so definitely a cheaper option than <laughs> buying Werewolf by Night number 32. I'd love to have a copy, but that's just one of those books that's um, price wise, I just can't see myself spending that much money for the first appearance of Moon Knight. Like Moon Knight, but just not that much. Once again, 
Shout out to Strange Blade and Reed Comics for showing this book off. Superman number 60, the first appearance of Agent Liberty, and almost like a, a Strange Blade homage, newsstand edition. Conan the Sumerian, number one. Joe Kubert cover. Uh, I, I don't think this is a ratio variant. I think this is just uh, like basically a B cover. But Joe Kubert doing um, a Conan illustration? I've never heard of that before. So I had to have it being a huge Conan fan. And uh, some of the interiors uh, are done by Richard Corbin, who does uh, kind of like a backup story about Conan's grandfather. Awesome stuff. Flash 210, one of my favorite Michael Turner covers with the Flash and the reverse Flash. Um, he did what? Probably about like five or six covers during the Jeff Johns run. I'd, I'd like to collect them all. Good stuff. More Michael Turner goodness. Spider-Man Red Sonja, number one. There's just so much coolness to be had on that cover. Red Sonja, Spider-Man, Venom. Too bad the story is horrible. <laughs> but, um... I would also like to get the variant of uh, this issue also. More Venom stuff. Venom Lethal Protector number four, which is the first appearance, I believe, of Shriek in the cameo of a bunch of other symbiotes. And number five, the first appearance of, uh, full appearance of Menace, which I guess will be the, the antagonist in the new upcoming Venom movie, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, if you can find these on the cheap, I would do it. Why not? But I don't think anyone is really going to care about any of these other symbiotes uh, after Carnage debuts. So just take that with a grain of salt. Still on my G.I. Joe kick. And this is an example of... I love J. Scott Campbell covers, but I don't like paying the J. Scott Campbell price. But um, there are J. Scott Campbell covers that aren't Generation 13 that people just have either forgotten about or don't really care that much about. And this would be an example of those. So, um, or, or rather of some of those. So here's G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number one. I guess this book can run you 10 to $15. I ended up paying five bucks for it. And the rest of these were only like three bucks a piece or four bucks a piece. So there's number one with the whole gang there. Scarlet looking awesome. Number two. Number three. And number four. Flint and Scarlet kicking some Cobra ass. Good stuff. Here's a minor little spec book for you. JSA All-Stars number four. And this is actually the first appearance of Stargirl. Now, I know she was the Star Spangled Kid. But this is when she actually takes the mantle of uh, Starman and officially becomes Stargirl. So, an important part of a uh, Stargirl story. <laughs> Couple of Bronze Age goodies. Eternal, the Eternals, number five. Um, I forgot why I bought this book. I was reading on a, a Google Plus page that a lot of uh, some posters were saying that this book was really underrated and that it has. Um, Three first appearances in it, but I have no idea who they are. I haven't even opened it up yet, so. But still, Eternals number five. The Incredible Hulk number 435. Got it, 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 Anytime I go to the comic book shop and I can find a Bronze Age Hulk versus comic, I'm going to pick it up every time. Shout out to Chaotic Comics for showing this one off. Um, Red Sonja. Number 15, this is the last issue of her first volume, Red Sonja vs. Vampires, last issue. A lot of good going for it right there for me, anyway. All right. I've been on a Hellboy kick since um, early, probably since like February this year. So uh, whenever I can, I've been snatching up Hellboy books whenever I come across them. But uh, this storyline, I've noticed, has started to take off. Uh, rumors are swirling that um, the new Hellboy, the upcoming Hellboy movie, is, is going to be either loosely based on this storyline. So um, I've been trying to pick it up. So here's The Wild Hunt number eight. Well, I guess we'll go in reverse. 
Number five, love that cover. Number four. Number three. And the hot book out of the, out of the bunch. Number two. And now, uh, shout out to Jim's Comics once again for showing this book off because he's the one that put me on the hunt for this before uh, CBSI acknowledged that this was a hot book. So um, I guess this is the first appearance of the Blood Queen that will be uh, played by the incredibly gorgeous Milo Jovovich. So um, this book went from being like a $3 book to, I don't even know, it was like $60, $70, $80 in high grade. This is probably only like a $20 or $30 book. It has a couple of spine ticks, but tough black cover. And um, once again, a book, if you go searching through the long boxes, it still might be there because this book wasn't really... I was, uh, is it wasn't really worth much. I was trying to, uh, collect all the Hellboy in chronological, uh, all the Hellboy stories in chronological order, starting with the Mike Mignola written and illustrated Hellboy stuff, but I kind of jumped ahead with this one just so I could, uh, avoid having to pay the, the hiked up eBay prices. Great stuff. Okay, hopefully I can finish off the rest of that miniseries, uh, within a month or so. Here's a book that I just picked up yesterday. Rune versus Venom, number one. <laughs> and I guess, um, I don't know. I, I just picked this up because I thought I saw it on a Google Plus page. And um, I ended up, I, I recognized the cover and I saw it at an LCS yesterday. So picked it up. And uh, I guess the hype behind this is that it features the first winged Venom. <sighs> okay, whatever. But uh, um, this book, last time I checked, was going for like 25, between 25 and 30 bucks. Or maybe say between 20 and 30 dollars. So, um, yeah, if you can get it on the cheap, I paid $3 for this yesterday. I would pick it up. Why not? It just seems like anything Venom related right now is pretty hot. Elvira's House of, C House of Mystery, excuse me, number one. Uh, beautiful Brian Bullen cover. Once again, love Brian Bullen's artwork, and this was definitely one of his best covers. Definitely caught my attention when I was a younger kid, and, um, Flash forward many, 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 many moons later, and I'm going through my LCS, and this was up on the wall for cheap. It was only like three, between three and five dollars. I forget, so I had to pick it up. Here's a little spec book on my part. Captain America number 164, the first appearance of Nightshade. And for anyone that has just finished off uh, watching Luke Cage season two, like I have, um, you kind of saw the de the debut of Nightshade in the in the final episode. So um, now that there's kind of a, a void for an antagonist on a, on the Luke Cage show, I would have to say that Nightshade might be um, a reoccurring antagonist. Love that costume too. So um, yeah, Nightshade number one hundred and sixty four. I mean Captain America number one hundred and sixty four. The first appearance of Nightshade, and I have to say I really dug that season. Um, good stuff. My favorite episode by far was when him and Danny Rand had a good old-fashioned Power Man and Iron Fist team up. Good stuff. I'm actually looking forward to uh, Iron Fist Season 2 now. All right. Women of Power Spotlight. Teen Titans. Uh, half issue from Wizard, which uh, people, a lot of people say this is the first appearance of the second Ravager. I, she doesn't officially appear in costume as Ravager in this story. This is more of the origin on of how Rose became the Ravager. So, cool. Huge Teen Titans fan. This was the only issue out of the Jeff Johns Teen Titans run from the early 2000s that I ha hadn't picked up. So, if you are going to pick this up, though, just make sure that it has the Wizard Certificate of Authenticity. So, very cool to pick that up. Shout out to Games for showing this off. This this has been a video of mass shout outs. This is uh, Secret Wars number five, the Mock Brooks uh, Captain Marvel variant edition. Just love this. Um, I mean, I love Mock Brooks artwork, and I just love how it has all the different renditions of Carol Danvers from uh, Miss Marvel, Binary, Warbird, and to her cur current incarnation as Captain Marvel. Beautiful stuff. And I will go on and say that is the cover of the haul.
Stars and Stripe, number, well, Stars and Stripe, number zero, first appearance of, um, oh, God, uh, well, Star. So, um, good stuff. Uh, also, Jeff John's first work at DC Comics, I believe. So, very cool. And as we all know, uh, Stargirl will be having her own series that Jeff Johns is involved in on the DC streaming service. I hope it's really good. Uh, for those not in the know, uh, Stargirl is basically based on Jeff Johns' uh, sister, who is deceased. So, I really hope it does well. Black Canary Oracle, Birds of Prey, number one. Tough white cover. Um, this was probably the most expensive book in the haul. Paid probably 35, 35 bucks, I think. But um, good stuff. I, I mean, I was surprised. I, I had no idea that Gary Frank illustrated this. And like with everything that Gary Frank illustrates, it, it was beautiful. So love it. And probably my my pick of the haul for, for, this, for this haul anyway. Glad to have it. Looking forward to the movie. And we'll end off with some Silver Age goodness. Speaking of Black Canary and Birds of Prey, is Justice League of America, number 73, probably fine minus condition. I paid $10 for this yesterday. And this is actually the first time that the Golden Age Superman appeared in the Silver Age. So I love little uh, historical geek factoids like that. So picked it up. And I also love a good old-fashioned JLA, JSA team-up. Speaking of which, shout out to Beauty Comics for um, reminding me that I had this on my list. This is Justice League of America number 74, and this is the first time that the Golden Age Superman and Silver Age Superman threw down. They knock each other out, spoiler alert, <laughs> within like three panels. But this is also the death of Black Canary's husband, and when um, Black Canary decides to leave Earth 2 in... Uh, uh, with the Justice League of America and return to Earth-1, which is a major, major turning point in that character's history. So um, I guess it's the next issue that she officially joins the Justice League, which is also on my list. Another book that's seen an uptick as of lately. But yeah, a lot, a lot of good history going along with this. And uh, Cherry on Top, Neil Adams cover. Can't go wrong there. So that's all I have for this week. I will be back, um, I don't know, sometime in September with another comic book haul. Thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing, as always, and uh, take care. Cheers.